Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of Cameralabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Nikon D300. Here it is, the D300. It's Nikon's latest semi-professional digital SLR and the successor to the popular D200. And if you're familiar with that model, you'll note that the new D300 looks very similar from the outside. The controls are in pretty much the same places and the D300 shares the absolutely superb ergonomics and build quality of its predecessor. You pick this camera up and you're in absolutely no doubt that you're holding a really serious piece of kit. But of course Nikon's made many improvements under the hood. Most obviously there's an increase in resolution from 10 to 12.3 megapixels. The autofocus system has been improved significantly from an 11 point system to nothing less than a 51 point AF system. The continuous shooting speed has also been sped up from 5 frames a second to 6. And that coupled with the new AF system makes this an ideal camera for fast action photography. Around the back of the camera, Nikon has enlarged the screen to 3 inches and also made it a VGA model. That means it's got double the number of pixels as its predecessor and that makes playing back images look absolutely fantastic. It also looks pretty good when you're in live view mode. Yes, like a lot of cameras these days, the D300 can use its main screen for composition and it's got a couple of neat tricks that I'll show you in just a moment. But right now, let's take a look around the D300's controls. The D300 has two control dials, one at the front for your finger and one at the back for your thumb. The top right surface of the camera is dominated by this large LCD information screen that even includes dots for all 51 auto-focusing points. The rear of the camera is dominated by the 3-inch VGA screen and to the right of that an 8-way rocker that allows you to cycle through your images or also select the active focusing point when you're taking pictures. Below there a switch that allows you to select the different autofocus area modes and below that a lever that will spring open the compact flash memory card slot. And the D300 is fully compatible with the UBDMA standard. To the top left of the body you've got three buttons here for quality, ISO and white balance and you simply press and hold these while turning a dial on the right hand side. You'll also notice a dial underneath here, this is the release mode. If I press and hold this lock here, I can change it from single, to continuous, to live view, self timer, and finally mirror lockup. On the side of the body, we open a flap here to have a look at the ports. At the top, a traditional composite TV output. Below this, a full size HDMI port for connection to HDTVs. Below this, a DC input, and then a USB socket. And finally, round the front, two more flaps that open to reveal a PC sync port for external lighting and an accessory port here for things like the cable release and the GPS cord. Now let's take a look at the D300's menu system. So running down the left hand side you've got the different menu settings. You've got the playback settings, shooting, custom settings, the main setup menu, retouching of existing images and the my menu page. Now the D300 offers an enormous array of custom settings. If we have a look at the autofocus system, just for starters there are no fewer than 10 different custom settings for the autofocus system. And the really nice thing is, is that if you press the question mark at any time, it will give you some information about what that particular feature does. Putting the D300 into play now, we can see some of the options that are available. There's several pages of information that you can cycle through for the pictures that you've taken. This first one here shows quite a large thumbnail in the top left corner and a brightness histogram here with some shooting information below it. Push the rocker down and we get a full view of the image complete with the actual active focus points used when we took that picture. And you can also see that you can zoom in to have a look at an enormous amount of detail on these pictures and also scrolling around is very quick. You'll notice that some cameras can be quite slow when you're doing this, but not the D300. Let's have a look at some more information. Here we've got a page which has the red, green and blue histograms, and then like some other Nikon DSLRs, we've actually got some pages of shooting information here. While we're in playback mode, it gives me a chance to show you some examples of active D-lighting in practice. This is a new feature on the D300. And this picture here was taken with active D-lighting set to low. I've got a couple coming up set to normal and high of exactly the same picture. And what I'd like you to do is keep an eye on the shutter speed, the actual picture itself, and the histogram. So here we are at low, now normal, and now high. I'll go back through those. So low, 
normal and high. Now you'll notice that active delighting has actually boosted the mid-tones and shadow areas slightly there, but that quicker exposure has ensured that highlight areas like these windows here have not been washed out. We've got a lot more information on that in our full review at cameralabs.com. Now the D300 may have a very detailed screen on the top, but if you press the info button while you're taking a picture, you can actually display all that shooting information on the back of the screen. And this can be really handy when you've got the camera mounted on a tripod. And you can also change those settings so that the background is dark and the fonts are light, which is really handy when you're shooting under darker conditions. Now let's take a look at the D300's live view modes. To do that, I'll go into the menu system and you'll see that there's actually two different live view modes, handheld and tripod. I'll show you handheld first because that's the default. Now with the release dial set to LV, all you need to do is press the shutter release button all the way in and you're now in live view mode. And because we've got the viewfinder grid turned on actually in the camera, we see a replication of that on the screen here. You also see some shooting information running along the bottom. Now to autofocus in handheld live view mode, you just half press the shutter release button. And what you heard there was the sound of the mirror flipping in order to take a reading, the double beat confirming the autofocus is correct, and then the view coming back again. Although it is important to note that the view won't come back until you let go of the button. I'll show you that again. So the camera says it's in focus, but it won't release until I let go of the shutter release button. And there's the live view again. And you can zoom in on this image to make sure that you're in sharp focus. However, if you want really precision focusing and you're working on a tripod, then switch the D300 to its tripod-based live view mode. I'll show you that right now. So here we go, tripod mode, and then I just press the shutter release button all the way in again. And there's the live view tripod mode, and you'll see again we've got the grid, but the lines now go across the whole screen. You'll also notice a red square in the middle. This actually gives us an opportunity to autofocus wherever we position the square. So I'm going to move it up here to this top corner here. And now if I want to autofocus, I have to press the AF on button. I'll do that right now. And there it is in focus. And you can see it's in focus because we got the double beep and the square has gone green. You'll also notice that took a while. That's because this is using a contrast-based autofocusing system, just like a compact camera. Although the D300 is quite a slow process. I'll show you that once again. So it's slow, but the one benefit is that we didn't lose the view while we were focusing. That's the benefit of the tripod-based system. The other benefit is being able to zoom in a massive amount until we're actually looking at the picture magnified one-to-one. -one. So this is every pixel on the screen represents every pixel on the sensor. And this allows us to manually focus very accurately. I'm just turning the manual focusing ring here. As you can see, it's possible to get that absolutely spot on. The Nikon D300 is a very powerful semi-pro DSLR that excels both in traditional photographic respects and also in terms of the latest gadgetry. In use, this camera handles like a dream. The build quality and ergonomics are superb. It's very quick and responsive. And it's also a joy to compose your shots, whether you're using the optical viewfinder with its 100% coverage or that detailed VGA screen in live view mode. However, the D300 is not without its downsides. The anti-dust system didn't prove particularly effective in our tests, and unlike its rivals, there's no live histogram in live view mode. However, the biggest problem facing the D300 is its price. At the time we made this video, the body-only price of the D300 was about 40 to 50% more than that of, say, Canon's 40D or the Sony A700. Now, in terms of image quality, the D300 is roughly equivalent to the Sony and only fractionally better than the Canon and other 10 megapixel DSLRs. Certainly, you shouldn't be upgrading to the D300 from a 10 megapixel model expecting much better image quality. You're upgrading to this camera because you want its build quality, its handling and its features. If you can justify those for the money, then you'll end up with an absolutely superb DSLR. However, if you don't want those features or you don't need them, then perhaps you'll be better off with a cheaper model and investing in a better quality lens. If you'd like to see how the D300 compares against the Canon 40D, Sony A700 and also the full frame Canon EOS 5D, then head on over to www.cameralabs.com. There in our Nikon D300 full review will tell you all about the features of this camera and how it compares against its biggest rivals on the market.